Welcome to Space News from the Electric Universe, brought to you by the Thunderbolts Project at thunderbolts.info. A team of scientists studying the afterglow of a gamma ray burst tell us that their findings will rewrite scientific theories. Using the Very Large Array Telescope, the team examined the afterglow of a gamma ray burst, which mainstream astronomers assume is formed by a so-called shock wave. What they observed does not match the theoretical predictions of the standard model. Dr. Klaus Wiersema says of the findings, Different theories for electron acceleration and light emission within the afterglow all predict different levels of linear polarization, but theories all agreed that there should be no circular polarization in visible light. We measured both the linear and circular polarization of an afterglow with high accuracy. Much to our surprise, we clearly detected circular polarization, while theories predicted we should not see any at all. We believe that the most likely explanation is that the exact way in which electrons are accelerated within the afterglow shock wave is different from what we always thought. It is a very nice example of observations ruling out most of the existing theoretical predictions. However, while the team recognizes the failure of the existing models, they have no alternatives that do not rely on collisions and shock waves in deep space. But what does the Electric Universe tell us about this surprising discovery? An article appeared in the Science News on May the 2nd. It was titled, Shockwave Findings Set to Rewrite Scientific Theories. Well, as we've seen in the past, this doesn't happen. <laughs> the scientific theories are just uh, tweaked and bent slightly to accommodate the new findings. And this is borne out by the original Nature article that the Science News referred to, where it starts... Gamma ray bursts are most probably powered by collimated relativistic outflow jets from accreting black holes. Well, as we've said repeatedly in the space news, black holes do not exist. So it's not surprising that the findings that have just recently been discovered by Klaas Wiersma of the University of Leicester just don't match what they expected. In fact, the research itself is to be commended because it was taking high-precision measurements of a rapidly fading event in the sky, and it's very difficult from a technical point of view. So the research represents uh, quite a technological achievement. The problem is that the findings were not expected at all. In fact, it was questioned why they would bother to do such an experiment, and that is to test the afterglow of a gamma-ray burst to see what the polarisation of the light was from that gamma-ray burst. The Science News says that the gamma ray burst is one of the most powerful events in our universe. However, the discovery of polarization of the afterglow uh, behaves completely differently than was previously thought. The new study, published in Nature, uses evidence from observations of a gamma ray burst to rule out most of the existing theoretical predictions concerning the afterglow of such explosions. Dr. Wiersema explains, about once per day, a short, very bright flash of gamma rays, the most energetic form of light, is detected by satellites. These flashes are called gamma ray bursts and take place in galaxies far away when a massive star collapses at the end of its life. Now, this is a statement of theoretical assumptions rather than a fact. These gamma ray bursts are followed by a so-called afterglow, a slowly fading emission that can be seen at all wavelengths, including invisible light, for a few days to weeks. We know that the afterglow emission is formed by a shock wave moving at very high velocities in which electrons are being accelerated to tremendous energies. These fast-moving electrons then produce the afterglow light that we detect. Dr. Wissema says how this acceleration process actually works is very hard to study on Earth in laboratories or using computer simulations. So what they did was to study the polarised light of the afterglow using large optical telescopes and special filters that work much like the filters in Polaroid sunglasses to detect the polarisation of the light. Dr Wiersema goes on to say, Much to our surprise, we clearly detected circular polarisation, while theories predicted we should not see any at all. We believe that the most likely explanation is that the exact way in which electrons are accelerated within the afterglow shockwave is different from what we always thought. And here we come to the electric universe model because the gamma ray bursts are expected to be very high energy electrical discharge events. 
from the centres of active objects like quasars and uh, stars that are suffering as a result of a supernova type explosion. In both cases, the electric universe sees the object, the quasar or the supernova, as being the object in the centre of a very active electrical discharge. And therefore, the origin of the radiation and so on is actually extended beyond the star and is part of a circuit. And these circuits are formed by Birkeland currents. And Birkeland currents have magnetic fields wrapped around them and the polarization of the electrons following those magnetic fields varies. It, in other words, it rotates and forms circular polarization. So this experiment actually confirms the electric universe model of a gamma ray burst. In late 2013, astronomers around the world were astonished when a gamma ray burst was detected that lasted not a matter of mere milliseconds, but for an unprecedented 20 hours. Investigator Charles Dermer of Los Alamos National Laboratory said at the time, Some of our theories are just going down the drain. This is hard to explain with our current models. However, like this latest discovery, such an astonishing event may be reconciled with an electrical interpretation of gamma ray bursts. Some months ago, we reported on a gamma ray burst which lasted much longer than expected. Once again, the Electric Universe model expects this kind of thing because the gamma ray burst is due to an extended electrical circuit, and therefore the activity in that circuit can last much longer than something which is concentrated on a tiny star. The paper in Nature refers to the gamma ray burst as being due to shock waves, a collision by a relativistic uh, jet smashing into the surrounding matter. This makes all kinds of assumptions, of course. And, uh, in fact, the article says, we suggest that new models are required to produce the complex microphysics of realistic shocks in relativistic jets. But this raises the whole issue of whether such jets are the origins of these bursts. It's never been shown precisely how a jet can remain trained like a fire hose in a particular direction and not be diverted by matter in the path of that fire hose outburst, if you like. And this is where the electric universe model makes far more sense, because if this outburst is part of an extended electrical circuit, the fact that it is thin is for the same reason that a lightning bolt is thin and extends over kilometres at the same thickness. And this is what we observe with uh, these jets originating from galaxies and from supernova outbursts and so on. At the end of the paper in Nature, it says, further hints of a more complicated structure of emission and acceleration regions come from observations as varied as high energy emission in gamma ray bursts and the fast variability of high energy emissions in quasars. The circular polarization of afterglows from gamma ray bursts as well as quasars offers a new line of evidence required to guide theoretical studies. The first thing we have to do is get the concepts in place so that the theory can actually work. And this is not going to happen while we have artifacts like imaginary black holes and quasar activity and active galactic nuclei being driven by supercollapsed matter. The last sentence in the science news report says extreme shocks like the ones in the gamma ray burst afterglows are great natural laboratories to push our understanding of physics beyond the ranges that can be explored in laboratories. The problem is that it is not a laboratory. These are mere observations of a few photons of high energy radiation reaching the Earth. And the problem is that the laboratories that are being examined are not the correct ones either because the plasma cosmologists are not permitted to have anything to say to astronomers. And yet it is the plasma theorists who work in actual laboratories where plasma phenomena are studied. For continuous updates on space news from the Electric Universe, stay tuned to thunderbolts.info.